The Man in Line with Andy Wint. Master Mike, good afternoon. Welcome to Man in Line on Manx Radio. Tim Glover and Jason Morehouse are on between now and one. If you want to get in touch, if you want to pose a question to either of them or just pass a comment, then you can text, email, call and WhatsApp. So Arbury, Castle, Town and Maloo. No doubt there'll be some all-island issues popping in as well. So, Faster Mike, good afternoon, Jason and uh, uh, Tim Glover. Hi. Good afternoon. Faster Mike. Good afternoon. Good to see you both. Uh, so, uh, Tim Glover, we were just pondering last time that we three were in a room together. It was at the, where well, was it, the Viking? It was at the Viking. It was the first of uh, the constituency election broadcasts. Uh, an well, hour, wasn't it, with an yeah. invited audience there? Oh, obviously, Jason Morehouse had done a term before then. Uh, so, to, I have to ask you, Tim Glover, if you'd known then what you now know now, would you still have done it? Yes. Uh, <laughs> It's full on, certainly not nine to five. I think I've had the advantage over some of the other new people in that uh, uh, my previous job was never a nine to five job uh, either. So uh, it's full on, definitely. That's uh, the, the and slow as well getting things done that's the frustrating side uh the first things first let's talk about wind farms lots of uh, comment in about wind farms but uh, uh k dropped a note in from castle town so the estimation for the wind turbines is 40 million pounds and would have an impact on castle town beach uh, my question will be what's the lifespan of the turbine what's going to happen when they're no longer useful uh, there are many more people talking about the proposed wind farms that may Maybe in the south, maybe in the north. Uh, Jason Morehouse. Yeah, lots of questions, lots of concerns. It came out of the blue and it's got a really short time to We talk about £40 million as the starting off figure. And as we've seen with Liverpool, people are really concerned about that figure. Um, lots of questions just in terms of how it's actually going to work. Um, we had a meeting last week with um, the MUA and Arbury and Dresden Commissioners and... I left the room with more questions than answers, really. It's a difficult thing to actually bring about. And the timetable is just going to create more pressure, more issues. And even though it's something we should be looking at, I feel the added pressure is just, yeah, creating a necessary rush. Uh, Tim Glover, why, uh, why Irish Dane? They've identified, they looked at several, you know, lots of sites all around, uh, all around the island. Did you uh, know anything about this? No, no, and that's, that's the concerning thing. It's, it's, to me, it's being rushed a little bit, this, uh, a lack of consultation over it. I'm in favour of uh, uh, green energy and uh, renewables, but it's got to be in the right place. And uh, we have a duty to uh, represent uh, our constituents in this matter. And, in fact, at the meeting, two uh, had to declare an interest uh, in that uh, two of the commissioners and Phil Gorn as the uh, the clerk and uh, Kiri Jenkins because they live in the area so they had to declare that interest but there's an awful lot I agree with Jason there's an awful lot more questions I think now uh, than we went into that meeting already having a, a, a myriad of questions we don't know really much more about this uh, marine ramp that's being proposed where that's going to be so there's an awful lot still to find out. Uh, two options at the moment for Erie Stain and, uh, and Scards. Option one, the beach landing, no ramp at £30 million. Pounds. Option two, marine ramp, which could mean anything. That could mean an extra... Um, an extension to the pier. It could mean a new pier. Do we know what that is, Jason Moyers? There was... Um a mention of £10 million in one of the documents, but in terms of this initial stage, no one really knows. It's actually looking at the route from the coastline to the actual site, so until that's actually determined and they're actually able to come back and say, this is an issue, this is fine, then we've got those question marks. At the meeting, they tried to provide some reassurance, but in terms of the data, it wasn't there, so yeah, until we actually see the data and what they're planning to do, it's very difficult to actually um, fight this and challenge 
jets. Yeah. Uh, option two has got four five megawatt turbines with a marine ramp. Uh, so for the uninitiated, for the new readers start here, Tim Glover, where is Erie Stain? How do you get there? Uh, it, it's in uh, Arbury, and it's uh, uh, up. You'd, you'd go up uh, basically towards uh, South Barul, really, isn't it? Mm. And uh, it's uh, where uh, it's facing south and right. southwest. So obviously, it gets uh, the prevailing wind, uh, as opposed to uh, the development further north. I think there's uh, there's more power, isn't there, uh, of wind? They were talking about it. Ah, oh, so I mean. I, uh, <laughs> I would say it's probably their preferred option, the way it's come across, if we're perfectly frank about it. We need it. to go through the process. But we have to go through the process, But, I mean, yes. taking... But I think that taking just on the route you were mentioning, yeah. there was talk that initially it would go through the airport, potentially at uh, night time, but from there, how they're going to get it up to, to Erie Stain and the skirts, I have no idea. Well, these, and I've uh, put in two written questions, yeah. one to uh, infrastructure and one to uh, Manx Utilities. As, differing answers we've got a very curt uh, there have been no survey of the Isle of Man's roads and whether it can cope with mm. the weight this tonnage that this is going to be because we, we're dealing with effectively uh, country lanes that have got a bit of tarmac on they're mm. not properly formed roads really on the Isle of Man there are very few so uh, they've said no there's been no road survey that came back curtly from infrastructure and from the Manx utilities we did get a little bit more detail but again uh, there was no definition of where the route would be. But these are the turbine blades are, are long and they're in one piece. They don't bolt together, do they? So uh, it, the place is full of twists and turns, as you say, as country lanes. There was Sh talk of one roundabout, wasn't there, in Castletown that would need some adjustments. Yeah. Well, I, I would imagine after <laughs> uh, what, 50 to 70 tonnes of wind turbines yeah. gone on Manx roads, there'd be more than just a roundabout that needs repairing. I can't think of any road that would go north from the, you know, the, the, uh, the Ballasella to uh, Port Erin Road the Balabeg Colby Road. I can't think of how you would get a turbine up one of those roads. That's, those are the sort of questions that we're waiting for answers on. Mm. Uh, what what, uh, what have constituents had to say so far? It's been surprisingly quiet. But, uh, yeah. There's a lot of uh, concern from uh, the immediate residents in the area and it's causing them quite a lot of uh, anguish because they're wanting detail as well and it's an area of natural beauty as well and um, I find it difficult to believe that Manx Utilities have yet to even consult Manx uh, Wildlife on the issue. Uh, so there's <laughs> we did leave that meeting with even more questions. You're anticipating more meetings over this, I guess. There, there, Definitely. there has to be consultation. There's been no consultation in effect with the public as yet. OK, uh, Richie dropped a note in. Uh, um, I don't, I'd not object to a wind farm near me, uh, but one over Erie Stain hardly seems possible. Uh, the probable complaints over this rush proposal the difficult installation logistics rigmarole expense the potential detriment to wildlife surely would lead to its abandonment there are more obviously suitable sites and the government must know this so uh, is this is this greenwashing rishi says uh, but wanting to rishi says wanting to look keen and go ahead without spending any real money and uh, and getting to it so do you has this been set up to fail do you think Jason Moore has? Um, that's an interesting question. And as I left the meeting on Tuesday, I did wonder. But I think there's that realisation we, we must shift in this direction. I think the timetable is wrong and the timetable needs to be re-looked at. But in terms of moving forward, it's an area that needs to be considered and looked at. And it, it does look an interesting choice and I went to the Timwell briefing and it was quite interesting that so much of the initial work had been done by computers it had been done off island and it's not until you actually hear and you see the situation and those bits of topography and um, whatever that really kind of has an impact on the winds and things and I, I do I do worry that they've kind of come with two sites are going to be exceptionally challenging and exceptionally costly and you know we really need to be deciding are these the right two sites we're pushing forward. Uh, where do you stand on, on the, the government's um, sustainable 
objectives now, the, the green objectives. Do you think the government's going in the right way, Jason Morehouse? Yes, I think we need to be going in this direction and it needs to be done at a rate that is appropriate in terms of 2026 for a wind farm surely is questionable just in terms of the planning process in terms of the ordering the turbines and things um, I've been in contact with the chief minister and there's you know the real possibility that they're going to be placing the order before the planning permission is given and doing something like that is going to create potential massive costs and complications and you know we are in a good place and we shouldn't be running at this like it's you know the last five minutes it needs to be done in a really careful considered manner um uh, tim glover do you think uh, in all honesty this is going to be done by the end of this timble by by september 26 if i was a betting man i'd probably say it probably won't uh, because i think the timetable is just too tight and there's a few other points there the deposit on a, a, an order for the uh, turbines I think needs to be put on by the end of this year um, if they're going to keep it to schedule because there is a demand elsewhere they've got to make sure that they've got their foot in the door on that front and I also understand that uh, they were keen to do it on government owned land as opposed to involving private uh, entities and uh, the turbines can't be put on heathland so um, because of the peat and uh, the very nature of it and putting the, the foundations in so that that is used to determine where uh, these sites uh, are available so my worry is that it just seems to be such a rush um, and they've had years talking about this and I just worry as it appears to me and I worry that it may be that the case that they've suddenly realized that we have been talking about this for years and they've been sitting on the hands somewhat that's uh, a, a phrase that's been used to me and all of a sudden there's now a, a mad rush to be seen to be doing something talking to Tim Cruckel in fairness the Manx Utilities Chair um, he did say that if it, it transpires that both sites are, are not uh, up for the job then both sites neither site will be picked so um, are we just <laughs> seen to do something that maybe won't happen anyway. Uh, and that's, that's also concerning from the point of view that if we're actually allocating resources to two possible sites that have so many things against them, are we just actually creating new barriers which, mm. you know, we should actually be looking at things in a bro more broad way in this first instance. OK, different subject now. Fran on uh, 762 says uh, the proposed new school at Castle Russian, is it 70 million at the moment? And and obviously the, the current building's been allowed to get into a poor state. What is the, what is the current position, Jason Morehouse? Um, it's difficult to put your finger on it. We've had quite a lot of meetings with the ministers for education, also the Treasury Minister, in the past few months. And there seems to be a movement in the right direction is going to be the first project that the major projects board actually consider and that again is going to be an interesting one from the point of view of where they're coming from and how they're going to view this um, in terms of our last meeting it was quite interesting that the minister for um, education broadened the scope of the project and was looking at more than a school and I think that could potentially create issues from the size of the budget mm. and I think we really need to focus on the school, the cost of the school and the actual need for the school or else the academy can become too big and end up not getting what we really need uh, the public uh, and parents you know people who have uh, children at the school who've had <laughs> some people have gone through it expecting a new school and, and are now at university and beyond but we, we, it just seems we're in a bit of a pickle with this Tim Glover yeah well we've seen I think more progress in the last year than we've seen at any other time in the last perhaps 10 15 years uh, that this has been talked about uh, and we have seen quite some substantive initial plans much more than just the conceptual drawings that were available uh, towards the end of uh, the last administration I mean these plans deal with as Jason says a, a new pool a sports hall and potentially even a new primary school uh, on the site so it's been well thought through it's even got all the detail about where the electricity points the sewage points it, it, it's much more substantive than anything we've seen before and it is going through this new capital projects process and uh, is we're assured uh, being actively uh, considered uh, now by treasury and once 
they have made that initial assessment will then find out what the time frame is right. because that's the big push now we're talking about it we've been talking about it for 15 20 years the school is getting worse and worse it's no better that's for sure and so let's get a time frame out there so that we can now then hold them to account on that front as well so in a, in a fair wind if treasury said yes let's just say if treasury said yes today when would you expect uh, you know the new school to be started to be built i would imagine there'd be another year where it's out at least with architects and uh, and out to tender uh, so that would take time so i think we're at least another at least year away from any spades being put in the ground jason yeah. morehouse have you seen any plans of what it might look like yeah we've seen some broad plans and um, they are encouraging but I think the there's a real need to actually bring in all the stakeholders to actually re, you know really drill down and find out what people require um, it's again a case of we are moving forward but without the actual detail and the clarity and actual dates you know we're not feeling as right. reassured as we perhaps should do who are the stakeholders um, it's everyone from the um, the parents the children to um, MHKs to um, the teachers Teachers, all the people who are actually involved in this process of actually moving the school forward and right. who will be there hopefully on day one. But there'll be no new Southern Pool until there's a new Castle Russian High School, I take it. Um, at the moment, that appears to be the case, but there are different ways to actually deal with situations and there are different options. But at the moment, that is something that is moving forward as part of the school, which is important because there was that fear that there was just a new school and the pool would just be left. And given the pool is at the end of life, mm. you know, we're really struggling to keep it going and that's causing frustration and fear. So we need to kind of fingers crossed yeah. and hopefully that can move forward well tim glover i mean <clears throat> there's a there's an impression from some people that the government couldn't wait to get rid of the southern pool uh, and yet everything about the southern pool is right for the way ahead it's good for mental health it's good for physical health it's good for the community it's good for socializing it's good for old people young people a pool is obviously good news but the impression seems to, to that, that, that if you like that the authorities just want rid of it yeah, I'm, it, it, it's the oldest of the pools, so therefore it's the most problematic at the moment because it is, as Jason says, at its end of its life. I mean, it's hanging by a thread, if we're honest. Um, and there's been an awful lot of work from the uh, the swimming pool board, which is made up of the local commissioners in the south of the island. Um, but part of that is not providing the full service that the public uh, want to see out of it, and there's now no cafe it's a vending machine so it's really on its last legs and uh, it, it does need to be addressed for all the points you've said uh, for community for mental well-being physical well-being uh, uh, and people do use that facility even though it uh, it, it, it perhaps isn't at uh, uh, the, the way it should be operating yeah. if it, yeah. were, it were fully functional and that's what we want to see back in the south of the island but there is a push um the four uh, MHKs in the south of the island, and by that I mean uh, June Watterson and Michelle Hayward, Dr. Michelle Hayward from uh, Russian, uh, we've presented a united front on this, and uh, uh, unless we see progress, uh, particularly uh, at budget time, and it's uh, set out and put out, we will not <coughs> vote for the budget. We've made that very clear in a letter to the Chief Minister and to the Treasury Minister, and indeed to the Education Minister. So we do need to see progress but it is going to be a staged development was how it was presented to us and the, sc the new high school would be the first part of that That's okay it. And it, it, it is interesting that the minister has got some criticism in terms of what happened but when we went to see we had the first meeting and we said this needs to happen now and that first initial problem was dealt with so there, there is hopefully that enthusiasm that push to keep things going okay uh hi Juan. you're live with jason morehouse and tim glover hey good afternoon and the afternoon tim and jason good afternoon fast am i fast am i right. um a few points um 
just uh, not with a phone ball, but just on the southern pool that you mentioned there before. Um, I'm surprised that I, um, I hear it's not open on a Sunday. Um, that, that quite surprises me that. I thought that would be, a, as, it, as Andy was saying there, you know, mental health and recreational, and, and you've got a facility there that's not actually opening on a Sunday, which is um, um, quite surprising. Um, but my main points were, um, we were talking about the wind farm uh, and the climate change. And like you mentioned there, Tim, they, they, it seems to be a very rushed deal to try and get this through. Um, for what reason, I don't know, because this is going to cost us a lot of money. And again, if, um, if, if you're not given enough time to look at all the relevant details, I find that a bit disturbing. Um, and to the point of whether Komen are actually giving you guys all the information that you need. I keep asking about um, base loads on, on this stuff, and no one seems to be giving me the answers um, to the base loads. You seem to be spending a lot of money out on, on this um, new green technology. And no one's saying what we're going to get in return in comparison to um, uh, another form of energy to use for the power stations, etc. And I agree with you, green, green technology is great um, and it's to be used, but uh, this seems to be, it's, oh, it's going to cost us a lot of money or it's going to cost us a lot of grief or headaches and not having base load to continue what we're doing um, with our lifestyle. Um, so I'm just I'm trying to work out whether the, um, the island is being pushed or bullied into following certain agendas um, just for political use, really, more than actually, you know, what we're going to gain out of it. Um, that's my point on that one. My second one... Um, I'd like your opinion on both of this, Jason, more so um, because of the, being a teacher. On the sex education policy, um, your views on it um, and the teaching or publicity around the transgender teaching in that specifically more so. OK. Uh, Tim Glover? Yeah, just dealing with those uh, in order. Um, yeah, you're, you're right about the pool and uh, it wasn't even open uh, during TT week uh, as well, which... Uh, uh, astonish some people but it is being done purely uh, to keep the pool in existence to keep costs down to uh, the, the manageable levels that uh, are to be allowed and it is staffing issues uh, so it isn't ideal but at least we still have a southern pool and let's hope we can get a new southern pool uh, that uh, uh, will fulfil all the needs of uh, the community uh, in the south. I'm just looking back at the uh, uh, 30 million was what we were quoted at uh, at the meeting we had uh, which Jason and I went along uh, with Arbury and Russian parish commissioners and that's for a 25 uh, year lifespan we were also informed on that so uh, there is to be an 18 to 20 months environmental study we're told uh, but again that hasn't involved the likes of Manx uh, Wildlife which I find uh, strange uh, a one year planning process was mentioned uh, the funding will be in the February budget so we'll see a lot more yet and it's going to be used to offset domestic uh, emissions uh, and will provide uh, 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 part of the mix that is being looked at of uh, alternatives now uh, to carbon energy so there's a lot to uh, still to come out of uh, and we were left as we've been saying with many many more questions and uh, more form the more you think about it uh, in the wake uh, of uh, of that uh, of that that uh, meeting that we had and on the sex education front uh, I believe uh, the investigation is still uh, taking place uh, as to what exactly happened at QE2 so uh, wait the results of that uh, with interest but uh, sex education uh, within schools uh, should be done uh, properly and openly with uh, parental consent as well in my view. Jason Moore Yeah thank you very much for calling um, in terms of the pool um We've been in contact with them about the opening times and there have been issues in terms of costs and trying to ensure that it's operating within certain levels. Um, also, they've made decisions in terms of the number of people attending on Sundays and things. So they actually have data in terms of why the decision was made. So it does look a bit random in places, but in terms of what they were providing as evidence and backup, there was support. Um, 
In terms of wind farms, I did make reference to the base load um, at our meeting last week, and it was quite interesting from the point of view that the MUA were stating that even though we are going to become more and more dependent on wind energy as the UK is, the UK has got a greater um, number of different um, sources of energy. So if the wind doesn't blow and our um, baseline is actually reached then there's going to be actually some support there potentially but I am slightly sceptical in terms of are we putting all our eggs into one basket here um, in terms of the RSC update um, I've been in contact with the Minister and stage 2 should be coming out in the next few days it was rather disappointing that she spoke to Manx Radio and also in Tinwald about it coming out on the last day of term and that did not happen when I went for clarification, it turned out that was a date when the report was being ha- handed over. So they've had it now a couple of weeks and hopefully there will be the update. I'm slightly concerned that the specialists we've actually got looking at the investigation are specialists in terms of RSE teaching. And really the second and third stages are going for that. And it was quite a shock that the last line of the final answer that the minister gave in Tinwald was the man actually be the need for stage three reports and I was kind of trying to get another question and I was halted in terms of that's your limit mm-hmm. but it will be interesting in terms of what comes out in the coming days in terms of where we are with regard to the stage two but also what comes next but I think it's really important we have good training we have specialists and in terms of the racial material that's been taught it, it is quite concerning and we need to look at that in terms of what's the need and yeah, just have a thoughtful considered conversation perhaps behind closed doors but really coming out with clarity because at the moment there have been too many unanswered questions and we've gone for 12 months when some key parts of the curriculum haven't been taught and teachers and parents have been on to me saying this should have been taught there are gaps and we need to move this forward as fast as we can it, it should be yeah it, it needs to be transparent all round as well that's the key um and needs to be back uh, on the agenda in uh, september but at the moment it just seems to be very cloak and dagger and we're not getting full information and what the content is etc and parents need to to be comfortable as as much as uh, teachers and the schools okay it's, it's gone on too long Long, you know, actually looking at the start of a new academic year, and we've not got that clarity. We've not got anywhere close to stage three. Okay. Um, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, good to hear from you. Thank you, Juan. Uh, let's uh, move on now. I just want to, uh, just some simple questions here. <clears throat> Briefly, if you would, uh, Mr. I think it's um, uh, Bilal Mansion, Mr. Whitaker is applying for an enormous solar farm around Bilal Mansion. Uh, are you for or against that? Tim well, Robert? it doesn't matter whether I'm for or against, to be quite frank because uh, our, uh, if we're having the wind farm where it's being proposed in the south uh, the grid and the system will not take both and, and that's one of the most frustrating aspects to come out of the meeting last week that we've actually got a monopoly supplier on the island yes. looking at wind power and we've got this solar um, development being ruled out. So even if the planners accept it, at this moment in time, yeah, no it can't capacity. go ahead. And th- there was that consideration before this site was chosen. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but it does look really quite concerning. So the wind farm would rule out Mr Whitaker's solar farm? Yeah, absolutely. That's what the uh, message was uh, loud and clear on that. And it's a simple uh, question of the capacity of yes. our system. So it I think there's a, with both. There's a 33,000 volt substation on the way to Castletown, I think, that it was going to be plumbed into. Yeah, but it, uh, it was a key consideration when the initial mm-hmm. solar farm went in for planning. And there was a hope that given that consideration, there was a way forward. So when I actually asked the question last Tuesday, it was quite a surprise. We actually got to this point where there's not that alternative. It cannot operate within the existing structure. OK, we're live with Jason Morehouse and Tim Glover on Man in Line today. For your new bathroom, head to Peace Setter. 
Harris Terrace, Douglas or Spring Valley. In Paysetter's fully fitted showroom, you'll find the latest bathroom products and designs from new contemporary styles to traditional Victorian tiles, wall and ceiling panels, accessories and much more. With many ranges exclusive to Paysetter's plus professional design advice from the experts, visit Paysetter Harris Terrace, Douglas or Spring Valley. You can get the best of it. Ramsey Garden Centre opens seven days a week for roses, shrubs, trees, perennials and an array of pond plants. Or if it's fire pits or solar lights, there's never been a better time to visit Ramsey Garden Centre. At ShopRite, a big slice of our range is continually priced to match or better other supermarkets. We call it Price Match Plus. The plus being what others simply don't match. Like ShopRite savers, low prices, choice and value you won't get elsewhere. With brands like Sainsbury's and no need to travel miles. Plus, the difference being locally owned makes. We're loyal supporters of local food producers and businesses and benefit the max economy directly. ShopRite, proudly locally owned. The Royal Manx Show is back. Friday the 11th and Saturday the 12th of August. Don't miss a true Manx tradition with livestock stalls, local food producers and great entertainment. The Gleadview Clydesdales, the Land Rover Display Team, Meglam Competition and so much more. The Royal Manx Agricultural Show, Nokelo Farm Patrick. Two days of right royal fun for all in association with Manx Telecom and supported by I FGL and your nation station Manx Radio. This Tuesday at 6 o'clock here on Manx Radio, join Kiri Kermode and myself, Simon Clark, for the new series of Countryside. We take a look back at a very successful Southern District Agricultural Show. I went along to the Solby Horticultural Show to witness the supreme champion on the day, which was a wonderful carving of a kingfisher. I spoke to the secretary and also a special guest who opened it on the day. That's all in Countryside Tuesday here on Manx Radio at 6 o'clock. And don't forget you can download or subscribe to the podcast for free at manxradio.com The Man in Line with Andy Witt. Faster my good afternoon, 23 minutes before one. This coming Friday we'll be live at Nokalo. It's the Royal Manx Agricultural Show. Man in Line will be there. Defer Minister Claire Barber MHK will be there. Uh, Bill Dale from Beach Buddies, Finlay McLeod, boss of the Creamery, Ian Parsons and Murray Kringle from the Bank's NFU. I think Andy Bass will be there talking finance from Conister Bank. And the new Managing Director of Isle of Man Meat, Rebecca Mia, will be there. So maybe you can join us if you're going to be at the Royal Agricultural show on Friday. We'll be live from there. And hi, Bonzo, you're live with Jason Morehouse and Tim Glover. Yeah, hi there, Andy. And hello, Tim, and hello, Jason. First of all. Just very quickly before um, the main question I want to ask, um, talking about Mr. Whitaker's solar farm. Of course, I think it must be remembered that not a kilowatt of that would go to any consumer in Max Utilities. Um, that is to actually power uh, the cannabis uh, growing facility uh, up in uh, you know, um, you know, just before just before we go into Douglas, um, you know, that will not contribute. So unlike the 20 megawatts of wind power, which of course would be going into into the Max Utilities grid. Okay, and your main question? So just clarifying that one, right? Um, I mean, we've been talking really about a variety of, of things and, and concerns, um, such as the swimming pool, such as uh, the long, long, long-awaited, um, I think it's been going on ever since I got back to the island over 20 years ago, when are we going to replace Castle Russian High School? Um, how are we going to fund the uh, wind turbines, wherever they may, they may be placed? Um, all that, of course, comes down to tax. And I noticed that Tim Glover said that there were particular uh, issues with the budget that they were not going to accept and that he and Jason would vote against the budget if those uh, those issues were there. Is it uh, Tim, and, Tim and Jason's uh, policy that we should actually have progressive taxation where the wealthiest bear the largest burden, and that should be the objective of tax policy, and that should start in February's budget. 
I agree uh, with you there, Bonzo, to a, to a large degree. I think it's high time uh, we did have a, a review of uh, taxation uh, on the Isle of Man. And I, I think it is something that uh, the Treasury Minister, Dr Alex Allenson, is also on board with. So we'll wait to see uh, what comes out of uh, with his proposals and uh, uh, and see if it's uh, in line with what you're proposing as well. But it is a long time, I think, since uh, a proper review of uh, tax here on the island took place and uh, currently we've got a, a lot of projects that are going to need paying for and uh, part of that uh, of course is going to come uh, from taxation so it is time I, I was concerned at the fact that we were spending quite a lot of the uh, National Insurance uh, Reserve as well uh, at the time of the last budget uh, and financial updates so it is time we looked at it and uh, uh, I'll uh, try and find out more over the summer as to where we are with that with the Treasury Minister. Jason Mulhouse. Uh, good afternoon. In terms of the solar farm, I'm not quite sure if that is the case. Um, so we'll, we'll look into that. But in terms of the taxation, I feel that the personal taxation structure cannot be altered too dramatically just in terms of the economically active people we're going to try and attract. Um, to get those people here is going to be a real challenge. I've questioned that many times. In terms of changing personal taxation, that could be the thing that really swings it against us. But I do think there's a real need to actually look at um, company tax. I think there's a major, major issue on the island that so many companies make so much money and in terms of their contribution, it's minimal unless they're involved in property unless they're a bank unless they're a very small specific type of business they aren't going to contribute and I think that in 2023 the mindset is very different from what it was in 1980 I think in 1980 companies were thinking we want low taxes we want to be paying a low charge but now they're thinking quality of life and they're thinking if we want our employees to go to the Isle of Man we want their children to go to nice schools we want decent roads we want to find hospitals I think the time has come to actually look at the taxation that companies are paying and I'm not talking about massive increases here I'm talking a very low tax of less than 5% that will bring in some revenue and actually be done for specific things so that companies and people know what it's being used for. And I think that's really important. And I've been talking about this for several years and it's seen as being something that is too radical and it will scare people off. But I think the mindset has changed and it'll be interesting to see what Bonzo thinks about that. Bonzo? Well, uh, on your last point first, I don't think Treasury will be <laughs> be very happy about the idea of hypothecating taxes. And that'll be <laughs> the thin end of the wedge to people uh, being able to fill out a form and saying, "I'd like to pay tax for that, please." But no, I don't want to pay tax for that. So yeah, I can't see I can't see that one flying. Um, as for personal taxation, um, well, people have to earn enough post tax in order to live here. And it becomes even more expensive day by day to live here um, rather than the UK, as I think I was saying to somebody, to, to somebody last week. In order to have the same kind of financial benefit that I had uh, with my personal allowance when I came back to the island in 2000, the personal allowance would have to be something like 22, 23,000. Um, and given that median earnings is, what, 37, 38, um, you know, how are you going to get the tax revenue if you need to actually have a personal allowance of 22,000 to really attract people here? And I think the idea that very wealthy people will somehow run away uh, like the fall of Saigon, um, clutching helicopter skids with uh, suitcases full of money falling out uh, just because uh, the top rate of tax might go up to 30 percent when the UK is never going to practically uh, the top rate of tax never going to be less than 40 percent and more likely when a new led government takes office next year it's more likely to be 50 percent so uh, that, again, I think is a specious argument. The problem that we've had for the past 30, 35 years is that essentially we have been running a welfare state where the more money you have, the more money government gives you. And that, and that has led to the diminution of public services, which leads us into the, the problems that we are now. So you, you reckon higher rates of personal tax 
not increasing corporation tax, Bonzo? Oh no, there, oh no, there must be corporation tax as well, um, but no, a not unrealistic um, raising of the of the top rate of tax, and of course no um, no threshold for national insurance. Um, you know, th- those are perfectly reasonable and would still give the island a, a very, very large tax competitive edge when compared to the UK, because we're not competing with Monaco. The only reason that very wealthy people live here, rather than Monaco, etc., is because it's the closest the low tax economy to the UK, uh, and they can easily buy property here. OK. They can't in the channel. All right. Jolly good. Bonzo, we appreciate that. We've got to crack on. People are... People are, people are uh, very briefly, if you want, yeah. yeah, I was actually speaking to a constituent last week, and he's actually looking at going to Dubai for tax purposes in terms of that zero rating, right. where you actually have to be a resident. And it's things like that that are coming online, and people can do quite easily. So to push a tax up to 30% does look relatively favourable compared with the UK. Okay. But with the other options, it's going to be a real challenge by putting them up if we were to. Okay, and I got a note in uh, from somebody last week. I was talking about the golden visa that they have in Portugal. Apparently, the golden visa in Portugal has finished. Hi, Stephen. You're live with Tim Glover and Jason Morehouse. Good afternoon, Andy. Good afternoon, gentlemen, and good afternoon, listeners. I'd like to just, if I may, follow on from yesterday's perspective programme, where Daphne Kane, MHK, spoke about the um, the Heritage Railways and the the alarming um, the, uh, message that appears to be coming from Coleman is that they're having a uh, they're having a review of the railways to see what the economic aspect of it is. And I suppose if the economic aspect is just purely on that and not the greater uh, benefit the, that the whole island has from people coming to visit for the uh, the Heritage Railways, and I include the horse trams in this, I would like to ask the, the, the your guests today, do, are they, do they share the concern of Daphne Kane? Because down in the south, of course, you've got, uh, you've got Castletown Railway Station and Port Aaron Railway Station, which I'm sure brings a great economic benefit to the area. And also, you've also got a lot of uh, heritage buildings within the area, and we've got the Masca report, which I suppose has made some recommendations. So my question basically is, uh, are, you, are you happy with the, the way the consultation has gone? Because the questions seem very limited and biased. And are you concerned that uh, with us trying to improve the tourist offering or the tourist numbers visiting, we don't really have enough private uh, provision we only seem to have manx national heritage and the heritage railways so are you concerned Tim Glover? Uh, yes, uh, it's a simple answer to that. Uh, I'm a big fan of the uh, Heritage Railways and I think they uh, add a significant uh, uh, interest to uh, pe- attracting people uh, to come and visit here but also uh, provide something for locals to do. And it's more than just Castletown uh, Railway Station in uh, our constituency. There's Bala Sala as well, Bala Beg and Colby Station. So we've got four stations in there. So um, the trouble with just looking, I mean, I know they're looking at the structure, the financing, uh, and uh, how how it could be done a little bit less expensively for government to just operate. But we, if you're just number crunching and looking at uh, 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 the uh, spreadsheets, uh, you you can become in danger of uh, knowing the value of every uh, the the cost of everything, mm-hmm. but uh, not anything about the value. And I think they add tremendous value. Jason, um, absolutely. Hard horrified by the current consultation. I did something on Facebook this morning about it. Um, two really concerning issues are, is there are no paper versions of the consultation available? If you want to write into um, infrastructure, you can do it that way. But at the moment, it's locked out unless you can get onto the website. Also, in terms of the questions, there are very few questions. And the question about the value of the heritage is in reverse order. So you expect the best thing to be on the 
left and then get less attractive as you go to the right. It's in the reverse form. So anyone who's completing the form by reading the question, doing that automatic answer, yeah. is going to give the wrong impression of what they think. And so it is really quite concerning, given that the chief minister also appears to have a lack of respect and value for what is possibly one of the key attractions on the island. Okay. I, I was amazed how short the survey was when I f- completed it. Amazed how short it is. Okay, Stephen, thanks for calling today. Thank you. All right, good to be with you. Uh, we're back in just a few moments' time with Jason Morehouse and Tim Glover. <laughs> NFU Mutual has supported the Isle of Man's agricultural shows for over 40 years. They're always great social events for the whole community and an excellent opportunity for us to meet you, our customers. So do come along and meet our friendly team at the NFU Mutual tent for a quote regarding your motor, home or business insurance. Look out for NFU Mutual at this year's Agricultural Show. When you need a fitting memorial or headstone for a loved one, contact Manx Memorials in Peel. This long-standing family-run Manx company offer a wide range of granite and marble headstones and memorials, along with an island-wide inscription and renovation service. Manx Memorial's skilled professionals will take the time to help you choose a suitable memorial, and we're proud to say we'll beat other local quotes. Call 843-861 or email matthew at manxmemorials.co.uk. I found a great photo of Grandad on the Queen's Pier Ramsey back in the 50s. If only we could see this historic landmark in its full glory once more. Well, actually, we could see the pier restored, whether through a small donation, regular transfer, or the purchase of an engraved plank or stanchion, you can leave your mark on history. To donate, visit qprt.im or call Graham on 355104. This audio has been kindly sponsored by Paul Carey and Sons. It's a tough time for businesses. Not sure what to do to turn things around? Let Nicola Balker and Co. guide you through. We've helped hundreds of businesses to success. Accountants and tax advisors to businesses on the Isle of Man. The Man in Line with Andy Witt. Jason Morehouse and Tim Glover, MHKs from Arbury Castle Town and Baloo are here. And so is Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Hi there. Um, hi, Mr. Morehouse. And, um, sorry, I'm <laughs> panicking. I'm on the radio. Um, I saw that there was a post on um, Manx Radio about how to improve uh, tourism figures that the government wants to increase numbers. Um, my question is in regards to recreational cannabis. There was a number of comments on there that got overwhelming support on it. And I know there was a public consultation done in 2019 regarding it, but obviously COVID happened and it put it on the back burner. My question to the two MHKs is what their stance is personally on it and what they want to do moving forward? Is it that they're concerned that the uh, UK government might step in and stop the push for recreational cannabis? Why has it been ignored when there's an overwhelming public support for it? And it would perhaps give us a chance in the world to push something a little bit more progressive, such as the US has gone ahead with it, and uh, states that would have been seen as quite have a draconian approach to drug policy, such as Thailand, which have gone full force with rec- allowing recreational cannabis. But why is the Isle of Man constantly in the news for a pitiful amount being pushed through the courts and potentially ruining young people's lives. Okay, Jason Morehouse? Um, Foster May, um, in terms of the cannabis um, debate at the moment, the real focus on getting the medical cannabis into production, get the planning, all those things. In terms of um, the recreational cannabis, that is a different area and it's something that needs to be looked at very, very carefully. Would you be for it? Um, not at the moment, but I'm, I'd look at the, the wider situation in terms of what's on offer. And, and what about ruining young people's lives for minimal amounts of cannabis? I agree with that, and I've spoken to the previous chief constable about that. And in terms of the, the sentences that's given, it's not in the first instance that item other things have happened previously with regard to this area so it's not as clear as the media do make out at times but it is a concern definitely Okay Tim Glover is there a line between medicinal cannabis and recreational cannabis? I've not much more to add to what Jason said because I know you're conscious of time at the moment Uh, uh, I I think it is time we looked at it and I I am concerned about uh, these sentences for a minimal amount of possession so it does need looking at again but uh, I'm delighted that the medicinal 
medicinal cannabis side of things is be- at last beginning to make progress and uh, hopefully the uh, first of those which will be at the uh, airport technology gateway will unlock that particular facility uh, at long last after it's been laid fallow as it were for so many years now. Well that could be worth millions of pounds Absolutely. to the island. Medicinal cannabis is a growth industry uh, and there are millions of euros and dollars and pounds involved in this uh, so <laughs> in terms of the fact that Ryan was mentioning, medicinal cannabis is in many places, lots of people go to uh, Amsterdam purely for that reason, so do you ever foresee the Isle of Man loosening its stance on medicinal can- oh, on recreational I, cannabis? I think it will in time, it's just whether this is the right time at the moment. Okay, we've got uh, a couple of minutes left and the hot topic of the day, uh, Tim Glover hmm. and Jason Morehouse, is the parking of motorhomes and large vehicles in residential areas. What's the feedback from down south, Jason Morehouse? Yeah, this is quite an interesting one. Um, it's quite odd that it's actually a consultation between the local authorities and DOI and I actually got onto the Chief Minister and DOI last weekend about what was happening and they tried to provide some reassurance but in terms of the size of the vehicles that's causing major concerns in terms of those measurements are actually much bigger than a large car yeah. and in terms of how do you actually enforce it in terms of my post bag and phone calls the concerns tend to be about DOI car parks where these vehicles tend to be left where they could actually remove them and there's no enforcement so it all looks a bit concerning at the moment Jim Glover well, you'd think uh, wind farms, uh, the cost of living, uh, cannabis, as we've just been talking about there, would be uh, a much bigger concern. But this is, it's caused a wildfire of uh, reaction from the public. And uh, I, I think the, we're struggling to enforce uh, the issue that we've got anyway at the moment. We all acknowledge there are vehicles being left or abandoned in uh, very inconvenient places for people. But you had some- Deal with that say, issue, you, you not, to, not this sledgehammer approach that we're adopting at the moment. You had something to say about TT as well, didn't you? Absolutely, and uh, um, this could be a major own goal in terms of people coming over to the TT, a huge own goal, and it, 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 I'm totally opposed to the proposal as it stands. OK, thanks for being with us today. Appreciate it. Jason Morehouse and Tim Glover, the two Arbury Castle Town and Malou MHKs. Uh, we're back with an open line tomorrow. So we didn't even talk about the size of uh, Balasala and how big it's going to be. And we have some questions about GP uh, availability. So maybe next time with our two MHKs. As I mentioned, we're um, live at uh, Nokalo this coming Friday for the Royal Manx Agricultural Show. And an open line tomorrow. Thanks to Howie Kane on the phones today. And thanks to you for your attention. Stick around for Christy D on 1 to 3. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. W-I-N-T